Welcome to our deadlift guide. Now we filmed a lot of deadlift content here at our duration at Barbend, but today we're putting it all together into a conventional deadlift guide. In this guide, we're gonna talk about the how-to, the benefits, the muscles work, and some common mistakes to avoid. And once again, this is the conventional deadlift, not the sumo deadlift. Ain't no cheetahs up in here. Bro, don't you compete sumo? Are you compete sumo? All right, so something to note about the deadlift, especially with the conventional, is that torso angles will be slightly different, but in the way we're going to set up, we're gonna to try to keep that consistent for every athlete. That creates a little bit more of a harmonious flow when you're getting positioned for the deadlift. So step one is approaching the bar. You're gonna approach the bar with the midfoot under that barbell, so right here where we have about an inch away from the shin. All right, so now that you have approached the bar, now let's get our stance width. Generally, hip width is gonna be the sweet spot for most athletes. Now, there might be a little bit of variance based on your hip angle and how wide your hips actually are, but generally, hip width is the best bet. All right, step three, you have your stance width, you've approached the bar, now it's time to grip the floor. And this is actively gripping that floor with your big toe, pinky toe, and the heel, trying to really pull that floor together. A lot of athletes will say, screw the feet into the floor, and that's gonna basically create that nice, strong tension through the glutes and through the posterior chain to help you kind of pack before you actually bend down and grab the bar. So when screwing the feet into the floor, a nice, useful way to think about it is to pretend the leg is a physical screw. Your foot is where that tip of the screw is, making that initial contact into the material it's screwing into, and then your thigh is the base of the screw. So think about how you screw that in, and the feet really make that first point of contact and grip. Then the leg is twisting in that externally rotated position, turning on the glutes and activating the posterior chain. All right, step four is going to be bending down, grabbing the bar, and this is kind of where we establish our grip width. Now, we've created that stable base with the legs. Something that is big with this point is to not shift that bar forward or move it by bending down and hitting the bar with the shins. So we want that bar to stay in position as we go down to bend and grab the bar. So as we go down to grip the bar, generally a grip width that's just outside of the knees, I like to think about putting a little bit of light contact between the inside of the elbow and the lateral portion of the knee to a point of where you're not knocking your knees in, they're just lightly grazing one another. And now let's dive into step five. All right, so now that we have our grip, we're then gonna think about setting the back and wedging those hips down. So if we keep that same logic of not pushing the bar forward and moving around the bar, it should allow us to get into our hip position that is gonna be optimal for our leverages without physically trying to second guess or shift that bar forward. So in this case, we're gripping the bar and we're gonna bring the shins forward until they make contact with the bar and generally that's gonna put your hips in the perfect angle to initiate pulling. All right, so step six, is physically pulling the slack out of the bar. We have our base, we have set the hips, we have strong tension through our posterior chain. How do you pull the slack out? So when you grip that bar, you're gonna think about contracting those lats, putting those scaps into the back pocket, and then you're gonna think about creating a tall chest posture. So before doing this, keep in mind that a tall chest posture shouldn't bring those hips lower. We're not squatting up the deadlift here. We wanna think tall chest, but we're gonna do that by maintaining our lat contraction and not forcing our hips backwards. So if done correctly, and I was coaching you, if you're tight on this bar and you have that slack pulled out, if I were to come up and push you, you would rock back and forth, but you wouldn't lose your positioning because you have tension through the floor and through the barbell before you physically initiate any movement. All right, the slack is pulled out. Now it's time to initiate movement. We have tension through our posterior chain. So before picking that bar up, you're gonna take a nice big belly breath, brace through the torso. So a good cue that I like to use, that I know Chad Wesley Smith likes to use too, is breathe into the obliques. So, and think about pushing the floor away with the feet. The quads, while not a primary movement per se, in the deadlift are vital for helping you develop force as you pull, you push away with the feet, and it kind of doubles down on the power production you can create, and it helps kind of sequence the body when doing the concentric portion of the movement. All right, so you're at the top of the movement. One thing to keep in mind is that when you lock out, we're not hyper extending the back to try to lock the weight out. We have a strong hip extension, our glutes are contracted, our torso is in a neutral-ish position, and our lats are contracted. Now as we begin the eccentric, the hips break, and that bar stays close to the body, and then as you start to hit that lower quad to knee range, that's when you're gonna start getting into knee flexion. So, as opposed to ramping it down the legs or 
trying to squat that weight back down at the top, hips break, hips break, and then you start that knee flexion as that bar starts to hit that mid to lower quad and knee region. All right, so now let's talk about common mistakes and tips to fix them. The first mistake we'll talk about is poor bar path. Generally, when doing the sumo or conventional deadlift, you want that bar to be picked up and put down in relatively the same position. If that bar is shooting away from you, then that's a good indication that you're sequencing the hips or knees poorly, especially at the top of the eccentric. So what you can do to fix this and check yourself to see if you're doing it correctly is to grab a foam roller or a dowel if you do not have a fill readily available and have them positioned about six inches in front of the bar. And now what you're gonna wanna do is on that eccentric, if you're knocking into that dowel, foam roller, or your fill, then that's a good indication that your bar path is a little bit off. You can also film yourself from the side, and that'll also give you a really good idea of how the bar is tracking. Mistake number two is not pulling the slack out of the bar correctly. So what that will look like, and a way to self-check this, is as you get set on that bar, have one of your friends come and lightly push you. Now, if you're doing this correctly, you will stay tight on that bar and you will rock back and forth. You're not gonna lose your positioning. So what does this look like when it's done incorrectly? So when done incorrectly, you can see that my lats are not engaged, I'm rocking back and forth, my hip angle shifts up and down. So if that's happening, then that's a good indication that you are not pulling the slack out of the bar correctly. All right, mistake number three is squatting the deadlift and that will resemble the hips in too low of a position. Note that this is not a clean pull nor how a weightlifter will want to set for their deadlift for translation to their sport. This is for the general conventional deadlift for your recreational lifter. So why is setting the hips too low a bad thing? Well, for starters, you're not gonna have great tension through the posterior chain and you're gonna then shoot the hips up and more than likely it's gonna throw off your bar path. So to fix this, video yourself from the side and bring your hips up slowly in each set you do. So do like two or three reps, video yourself from the side and watch your hip angle. Once you get to a height of about two or three reps that you can consistently do without the hip shifting and your form being technically proficient, generally that's gonna be the best spot for your hips. So don't overcomplicate it, just simply bring the hips higher, maintain your good position, pull the slack out, and honestly, once you see yourself from the side and test a couple different hip angles, you're gonna feel one that's a little bit more comfortable than the others, and that's generally gonna be the one that you're gonna go for. All right, so now let's chat on some of the muscles worked with the deadlift. For the deadlift, the prime movers are gonna be focused on hip extension, so your glutes are gonna be a prime mover in the deadlift. The hamstrings are also gonna be heavily activated when performing this movement. From there, you're gonna have a lot of synergistic and stabilizer muscles that will come in in different phases during the movement. So from the initiation off the floor to the lockout of the standup. So some of these muscles include the gastrocnemius, the soleus, so the calf musculature that helps maintain that strong vertical shin angle. You're gonna have the obliques and abdomen activated to some degree to help stabilize and neutralize that torso positioning throughout the full range of motion. You're gonna have the erectors at play. The quads are gonna be a little bit at play as you push the ground away while you pull. You're gonna have the traps at play. And you're also gonna have things like the rhomboids and lats to really keep that bar close and stabilized at the top of the movement. Five quick benefits that come along with performing deadlifts is number one, they have carryover to sports. So creating a strong hip thrust, building a strong core and back are obviously paramount for being excellent in nearly every sport you could possibly play. That's not to say you need deadlifts for sport, but there can be some carryover. Number two is that they are a pretty functional movement. So picking things up off the ground is a pretty common movement pattern. Now, obviously there are other ways to train that, but if you want to deadlift, then you will get some carryover to just daily life with using them. Number three is that if you want to compete ever in strength sports, this is a great movement to nail and really get strong in, especially for powerlifters who compete with the deadlift. And if you compete in something like strongman or weightlifting down the road, having a strong deadlift will obviously have carryover to your pulling potential. Number four is deadlifts are just fantastic for building a bigger back and just overall body musculature. So if you're pressed on time in the gym and you wanna focus on bigger movements like the squat and your presses, then the deadlift is a pretty good bet for doing so. And number five, they look badass, and the people around you in the gym will definitely stare and be impressed. That wraps up our deadlift guide video. If you want more on the specifics of the deadlift, we've included some relevant links down in the description below that highlight some of those very specific performance aspects. And if you wanna read more on the deadlift and everything that comes along with it, check out our written article linked down below.
Ich bin der Mann, 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 ich bin der Mann,